Bristol, Vermont, WNYV, Whitehall, Glens Falls. It's 8 o'clock. Good morning. This is Northern Light for Monday, December 11th. I'm Todd Moe. Monica Sandreski will be back tomorrow. Folks in the southern Adirondack community of Lake Luzerne have been without a public library for the last few months. Most of the library staff and board quit after the idea of hosting a drag queen story hour deeply divided the community and often shut down library board meetings. Shouting at me, do you want the drag queen story hour? Do you want the drag? And, and loudly. And finally, I just looked at him and I was like, yes, OK, I'm in favor of the drag queen story hour. You know, just like behaviors that hadn't no place at a library. Governor Hochul is being urged to veto a new public campaign finance bill that's supposed to make small donations go further, but some say it will subvert the public matching fund system that's expected to take effect next year. The law, as it was originally enacted, was intended to amplify the voices of everyday donors, not those of major contributors who already have such an outsized say in New York state politics. More from our Albany reporter, Karen DeWitt, coming up. Stay tuned. Northern Light is next. Broadcast of Northern Light here on North Country Public Radio is supported by carcomplaints.com, providing information about squeaks, bangs, flashing lights, odd smells, and other vehicle complaints online at carcomplaints.com. And Adirondack Experience, the museum on Blue Mountain Lake, open for last-minute holiday shopping on December 16th from 10 to 4, online anytime at the adkx.org. This is Northern Light. I'm Todd Moe. The public library in Lake Luzerne near Glens Falls has been closed for over two months. The community erupted with controversy after a drag queen story time was put on the library's calendar last spring. That story hour had never actually happened, but the situation spiraled out of control. Lucy Grindon reports. The Rockwell Falls Public Library is supposed to serve four towns— Day, Hadley, Stony Creek, and Lake Luzerne. But right now, it's not serving anybody. It has no functioning board and no librarian. One clerk has been keeping the lights on, and there's only one word to describe her work days. Lonely, because there's no one else here and the public's not coming in, and this library isn't doing what it was made to do. Claire Spivak says the area is rural and relatively poor. It also doesn't have great broadband internet access, so the library used to be an important resource. A lot of people would come in here purely to use the internet, and even some who still come and park outside and use our Wi-Fi. Alone inside, Spivak answers the phone and shelves any straggling books that get dropped in the return box. This all started because of a public controversy over a drag queen story hour this past spring. A quick note about drag queen story hours. They're just like any other story hour, but with a drag queen doing the reading. They've become popular around the country. But dozens of people were deeply divided about the idea at a meeting in April, live streamed by a resident on Facebook. My name's Mike Mahoney. Why are these drag queens being normalized and mm-hmm. throughout, throughout really the country and right here in our own town? Chelsea Fish said she didn't understand the uproar. I want to let everyone know that this is not a mandatory thing for your kids to do. Mm-hmm. Josh Jacquard, the pastor at local Victory Bible Baptist Church, had some of the harshest words against the drag queen story hour. This sexualizes children, and it is absolutely wrong. Why are we not having police officer story hour? Why are we not having shop owner story hour? Why are we not having pastor story hour? Why does it have to be transvestite story hour? The word transvestite is considered archaic and offensive by many in the LGBTQ plus community. The month after that meeting, Jacquard was elected to the library's board of trustees. 
He declined to be interviewed, but he said in an email that voters supported him because of his priorities, including, quote, keeping our children safe from sexualization and content that is not age appropriate. Here's the thing. The drag queen event was postponed. And in the end, it never happened. But the controversy kept escalating. The drag queen story hour seemed to open up Pandora's box. That's Kathleen Jones. She served on the library's board beginning in May. At her first meeting, Jones says a member of the public demanded her opinion. Shouting at me, um, do you want the drag queen story hour? Do you want the drag? And, and loudly. And finally, I just looked at him and I was like, yes, OK, I'm in favor of the drag queen story hour. You know, just like it, it, behaviors that had no place at a library. Over the summer, library staff said anti-drag queen people were harassing them. At the July board meeting, the library director said staff morale was in trouble and complained about ongoing harassment. In September, she and another staff member resigned. The library closed to the public on September 26th. Under normal circumstances, the board of trustees would just hire a new librarian. But the board was at an impasse on almost every issue. Two other trustees resigned in October, and Jones resigned in early November. So... By my resignation, that reduced the number of trustees to two, and therefore there was no quorum. That was a strategic decision on Jones's part. Since the library board no longer has a quorum, the state board of regents, part of the Department of Education, now has to step in to appoint three new trustees. And I, I knew that that was going to happen, and I truly think that That's what needed to happen because it takes the governing out of the hands of the remaining trustees. The library held another public meeting late last month, also live streamed on Facebook, to discuss its current situation. And things got even worse. No, you have your own agenda. That's board member Josh Jacquard at the end there, saying that libraries shouldn't be hotspots of social engineering. Right after the meeting ended, there was a physical altercation involving three members of the public. What is going on? Police were called to the library, but no charges were filed. Former trustee Kathleen Jones says it was this kind of intensity that led her to resign. I just, you know how many times you can bang your head into a brick wall before you say to yourself, um, I'm not doing this anymore? Um, And that's what I felt like. Other people who are interested in serving on the board have been submitting resumes to the local public library system to apply for the open spots. In the meantime, the library has remained closed. No browsing bookshelves, no public meeting spaces, no story times at all for kids. Claire Spivak, the library's lone clerk, says the community has lost one of its only shared public spaces. It's hard to stress the importance of having a place for community members to come and simply be where they can feel safe, secure, and welcome. It's now up to the Board of Regents to appoint trustees to hire new staff and get the doors open again. An education department representative said in an email that their goal is to help the library reopen as soon as possible. The Board of Regents' December meeting starts today. Lucy Grindon, North Country Public Radio. Nine minutes past eight, and you're listening to Northern Light here on North Country Public Radio. I'm Todd Moe. We've got some uh, heavy, wet snow with a winter storm warning still in effect for the much of the Adirondacks and the Champlain Valley, Franklin County, southern St. Lawrence County through this evening with the Weather Service saying that heavy, wet snow uh, will bring hazardous travel today and uh, isolated uh, scattered or uh, and isolated scattered power outages possible gusty winds this afternoon with uh, wind gusts up to 30 35 miles per hour uh, and also uh, there are winter weather advisories for the rest of our region today with a mix of snow sleet rain 
uh, or just plain old gray skies. Uh, windy conditions this afternoon, though, and uh, some schools are closed because of the snow this morning and hazardous travel. These school districts are closed for the day. Osable Valley, Lake Placid, Saranac Lake, St. Bernard School in Saranac Lake. There are two-hour delays this morning at Beekmantown, Boquet Valley, Shazy, Crown Point, Johnsburg, Keene, Long Lake, Minerva, Mariah, Newcomb, North Warren, Northern Adirondack in Ellenburg Depot, Saranac, Scroon Lake, Ticonderoga, Tupper Lake, and Willsboro. They're on two-hour delays today. Tender Care Tot Center, Raybrook closed, and North Country Community College, all campuses opening at 11 o'clock this morning. We have a list of delays uh, that are include both schools and community venues. You can check that out throughout the morning. That's at ncpr.org. Campaign, uh, rather, advocates of a new public campaign finance system that makes small donations go further are urging Governor Hochul to veto a bill passed by the state legislature that they say severely weakens the law. Karen DeWitt reports on how the bill would aid deep pocket interests when the law intends to empower small donors. The 6-to-1 public matching fund system first takes effect in the 2024 election cycle. Joanna's Dedis with NYU's Brennan Center warns, though, that a measure approved in the Democratic-led state Senate and Assembly earlier this year would subvert that system and cost taxpayers extra money. She urges Hochul to reject it. The Brennan Center and many others are opposed to this bill and are calling for Governor Hochul to veto it. Numerous reform groups in 20 2019 successfully pressed for the legislation establishing the public matching fund system. The monies to augment donations of $250 or less was aimed at empowering small donors over deep pocket interests. But the bill approved in June changes that. Instead of limiting the donations qualifying for matching funds to $250 or less, the new standard would be the current maximum donation of $18,000. While the full amount would not receive the 6-to-1 public matching funds, the first $250 of the larger donations would be matched with public monies. Stadi says that's wrong. This bill runs counter to the spirit of the law and that promise because the law, as it was originally enacted, was intended to amplify the voices of everyday donors, not those of major contributors who already have such an outsized say in New York state politics. The bill was controversial when it was approved last June. It was narrowly adopted in the state Senate, with two of the public campaign finance law's original co-sponsors voting no. Governor Kathy Hochul does not normally signal in advance whether she will sign or veto a piece of legislation. But she did say last summer, shortly after the measure was approved, that she had not been involved in the efforts to change change the maximum donation limits and that she and her legal advisors would be looking closely at the bill. I need to look at each one very carefully, make sure there are no unintended consequences to anything we do, and that's going to be the one of my highest priorities. Stadis with the Brennan Center says 150 candidates from both major political parties have already signed on to the program for the 2024 election cycle. In Albany, I'm Karen DeWitt. Get more news all the time on our website at ncpr.org. You're listening to Northern Lights right here on North Country Public Radio. I'm Todd Moe. Stay with us. Uh, State Senator Mark Waldzik, who's in the U.S. Army Reserves, is to be deployed to Kuwait for much of next year. We'll have more on that story. Also, music featuring the Fitzgeralds. They'll be giving a live concert at Pickens Hall in Hilton tomorrow night. We'll tell you more. Stay tuned. This is music by B. Children in Canton. 
Northern Light is supported by Apothecary Chocolates, making gourmet chocolates by hand from all natural herbs, botanicals, and tree syrups. Apothecarychocolates.com. And by the Village Mercantile in Saranac Lake, established in 2011, with a mission of community-fueled solutions with essentials for home, camp, and gift-giving. VillageMerc.com, anything but general. Have you made a financial gift to North Country Public Radio this year? If you have, thank you so much. If not, there's still time. You can make your year-end giving to North Country Public Radio, especially a one-time gift in support of news, programs like Northern Light. Go to ncpr.org slash give. Thanks and happy holidays from all of us at NCPR. State Senator Mark Walczyk is being deployed overseas. Walczyk is a captain in the U.S. Army Reserves and will be gone for much of next year. Amy Fry Reisel has more. Walczyk announced through a letter to his constituents last week that he's being deployed to Kuwait for nine months. The 38-year-old Republican lawmaker represents District 49, which covers Jefferson, Lewis, Hamilton, and Fulton counties, as well as parts of St. Lawrence, Herkimer, and Oswego. Walczyk will be leaving at the end of January. That means he'll miss the bulk of the state's legislative session, which runs from January to June. Walczyk says he's hired additional staff to provide constituent services and wrote that in his absence, his team will, quote, work just as hard for you as I do, end quote. While deployed, Walczyk will be unable to vote on legislation, although he will be able to introduce new bills to the New York Senate. He has not commented on how his deployment will impact running for re-election in November. He leaves behind his wife and two children, including a newborn son. Amy Feireisel, North Country Public Radio. As it gets colder and illnesses like the flu and RSV are on the rise, the Fort Drum Regional Health Planning Organization is urging North Country residents to make preventative health care a priority. Joanna Loomis from the North Country Health Initiative spoke with WWNY-TV saying it's time to take stock. Stop, pause, ask yourself when was the last time you had an annual wellness visit or check up with your doctor? When was the last time you had a dental exam or cleaning? Um, are there any immunizations that you're eligible for or due for? Uh, are there any, you know, screenings? Loomis says many people stopped or reduced their preventative health care during the COVID-19 pandemic. The Watertown City School District has been chosen for a semiconductor pilot program, which will prepare high school students for careers in the rapidly growing semiconductor industry. Ten districts across New York are participating in the program, which starts in the schools next fall, the fall of 2024. It's being paid for by the state and by Micron Technology, the tech giant. Micron announced plans to build a huge semiconductor fabrication facility outside Syracuse last year. It'll be the largest in the U.S. and is projected to create some 9,000 local jobs in the semiconductor field. And a Plattsburgh man was arrested last week after making dozens of death threats toward Franklin County officials and their family members. Wednesday night, 53-year-old Eugene Burdash started posting threats on Facebook. As the Press Republican reports, they were filled with slurs and included pictures of Burdash holding a knife and photos of the Oklahoma City bombing attack. He targeted numerous Franklin County officials and even the children of a county legislator. In response, the Franklin County Courthouse and the Malone Central School District were on lockdown for several hours Thursday morning. Burdash was arrested by the Plattsburgh City Police later that day. He's charged with aggravated harassment and making terroristic threats and is being held in the Franklin County Jail on a $100,000 cash bail.
You're listening to Northern Light right here on North Country Public Radio. I'm Todd Moe. Monica Sandresky is back tomorrow. Coming up in just a couple of minutes, we've got some music by the Fitzgeralds. They'll be in Hubleton tomorrow night for a concert at Pickens Hall. Also, we'll check out some of the other events for the holiday season coming up. And we've got more news from NPR during Morning Edition at 8.30. The uh, Weather Service says snow, some heavy, wet snow. Uh, There is a winter storm warning still in effect through this evening. For much of our region, the uh, Adirondacks, especially the northern Adirondacks, southern St. Lawrence County, Franklin County, the Champlain Valley, northern Vermont, included in that winter storm warning through tonight. Elsewhere, winter weather advisories through this evening. And uh, here in Canada right now, just very gray skies with 34 degrees, uh, a wintry mix uh, in the Canton, St. Lawrence Valley, also along eastern Lake Ontario. But in places like the Tri-Lakes, Plattsburgh, the Champlain Valley, they've got snow uh, continuing, some heavy snowfall at times. And then the Weather Service says uh, some wind gusts out of the northwest, 25 to 35 miles per hour, mainly this afternoon. That could cause some power outages this afternoon and tonight. So again, travel uh, uh, is difficult this morning in those areas where where there's heavy snow. And uh, a number of schools are closed today or they've delayed their start time. You'll find that list on the front page of our website at ncpr.org. Again, a winter storm warning in effect till 7 o'clock this evening for much of the Adirondacks, uh, the Champlain Valley, all of northern Vermont. uh, With heavy wet snow, maybe another three or four inches of snow accumulation possible. That's additional snow accumulation with wind gusts up to 35 miles per hour. We are media sponsor for a family of, uh, of uh, musicians from Canada, uh, traditional music, um, uh, Irish, Celtic music with modern stylings. They're called the Fitzgeralds. They're going to be in Hubleton tomorrow night, Tuesday night, 7 o'clock, for a live concert at Pickens Hall. They're an award-winning fiddle and step-dancing group of siblings from Canada. As I mentioned, their act blends traditional music and dance with modern stylings. If you want more information about tomorrow night's concert, you can check our website at ncpr.org slash calendar. Uh, Here is a sample of some of their music. This is End of Winter and Christmas in Killarney featuring the Fitzgeralds. Thank you. 
That gives you an idea of why they're an award-winning fiddle and step-dancing group. That's the Fitzgeralds, and they'll be live in concert at Pickens Hall in Hubleton tomorrow night, Tuesday night, starting at 7 o'clock. Great music, blending traditional and dance, modern stylings. That's Fitzgerald's, a group of siblings out of Canada in uh, Hubleton tomorrow night, 7 o'clock. For more information, check our website, ncpr.org slash calendar. A reminder as well, there's music coming up this coming weekend. Uh, Keysville, Peru, Ecumenical Choir's 56th annual Christmas concert featuring Jeanette Woodruff as a director, Steve Collier, accompanist Steve Woodruff on the organ. Two performances, Saturday, December 16th, 7.30 at St. John the Baptist Church in Keysville, and then Sunday evening, December 17th, 7.30 at St. Augustine's Church on Main Street in Peru. Free admission That's the Keysville, Peru Ecumenical Choir, their 56th annual Christmas concert, Saturday and Sunday nights, uh, Saturday night in Keysville, Sunday night in Peru. Also, the Orchestra of Northern New York celebrates the holidays with a -a one-of-a-kind concert in Potsdam and Watertown with a 23-piece ensemble of trumpets, trombones, horns, tuba, and percussion performing Holiday in Brass on Saturday, December 16th, 7.30 in Hosmer Hall at SUNY Potsdam and Sunday, December 17th, First Presbyterian Church in Watertown. Should be some great holiday brass music um, featuring uh, members of the Orchestra of Northern New York coming up uh, this weekend as well, Saturday and Sunday. Saturday in Potsdam, Sunday in Watertown. And uh, the Whalensburg Grange Hall and the Depot Theater Academy are presenting a return to a popular holiday tradition with a performance of A Christmas Carol, a radio play, coming up on Sunday, uh, the 17th, live music and refreshment beginning at 2 o'clock. And the reading starts, the reading performance starts at 3 o'clock. It's based on the novel by Charles Dickens, uh, a radio play reading complete with live sound effects featuring local artists and professional actors. Admission to the event is free and open to the public. Donations uh, greatly accepted to benefit the backpack program. It's coming up at the Whalensburg Grange. Some of the events for the holidays coming up, you can check our website for more information and uh, see what else is going on around our region. That's at ncpr.org slash calendar. Thanks for joining us for Northern Light. Stay tuned for more of Morning Edition coming up in just a moment. Monica's back tomorrow. I'm Todd Moe. Thanks so much for listening. Northern Light supported by St. Lawrence Health, offering my care, a way for patients to access health information and stay connected to their care team. Registration is available at stlawrencehealthsystem.org. Stay tuned. Morning Edition continues in just a moment. Till tomorrow, be well.